Alrighty guys, this video is going to be jam-packed with information, so the first three minutes are going to be laid out with a bunch of editing tips to help you get a faster editor, and then the next three minutes after that will be all aiming tips to help you improve your aim, and then the last three minutes will be building tips, so this video is going to be jam-packed and it's worth the watch. Alright, but let's get it and let's not waste any time. So the first thing we need to do is make sure we have the best settings possible. Now these are settings that you may want to use if you're an exponential player. And now if you need these, then go ahead and copy these down and pause the video. And now let's have a look at some linear settings in case you're linear. And then boom, these are the settings that are perfect for linear to make sure they have faster editing speed. Alright, but we're not done there. There's even more settings you can do to double your editing speed. So first one here, you're going to go into your settings, and you're going to come down here. It says confirm edit on release. Turn that bad boy on, then quickly move over here. This is actually a really secret tip you guys might not know about. And first of all, you want to be making sure that you have a single edit bind on. I actually personally use left stick to edit. You can use whatever you want. But whatever you do, make sure that you have a random edit binded to switch mode slash edit. And also, if you're on PC using controller, make sure you use controller platform as generic. It just doubles your editing speed. Trust me. It makes it have way less input lag and trust me so much faster but hey what is up my name is woods and if you are new to the channel then make sure to subscribe if you are a console player as i'm always helping you guys get better and i actually let my fans choose the own tip videos that they get to see and you can get your own personal video made for you by subscribing with notifications being early on a video and requesting one of those videos and i'll make it for you other than that, guys, make sure to smash a like. Let's go ahead and reach 1,000 likes on today's video. I know we can do it. But, guys, you may as well subscribe. It's literally free, and we're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. So just help me out. And you can always unsubscribe at a later date if you don't like the content I make. But I can guarantee you these tips were exclusive and no other channel I make. Anyways, let's hop straight back into the video. Alright, now let's move into some simple tips you can do to actually practice your editing speed. If you have seen this before on my channel, then don't worry, because we're about to get into some aim tips in a second. But for now, let's go ahead and have a look. So what you want to do is go into creative and place these movement modulated pads down. Make sure one of them is on fast, and then the other one is on normal, and put them both to infinite. Now what this will do is it will make you speedier when actually playing, and then now when you go ahead and practice your edits, you'll be two times as fast, and then when you go back to normal speed, it will feel way smoother and way easier, and it's just going to overall double your editing speed, because you'll be learning to actually edit in a two times speed fashion but when you go back to normal speed it will feel so much easier so try that and trust me moving on to the next tip all right this next tip is going to be quite basic and a lot of people don't actually take advantage of this when it comes to complex edits a lot of people will be doing when it comes to running up the ramp they just do this and it's a bad thing they run straight up the ramp right to the edit and they go through and now a lot of people choke their edits because they don't have enough time and they end up messing up a way you can actually add some time to it and make it easier for yourself is by running diagonally across the ramp and it gives you more time to actually prepare yourself for the edit so by running diagonally across it gives you more time to prepare and it just makes it so much easier for you to practice and then when when you feel ready you can go straight up the ramp and it'll be so much easier trust me anyways let's go ahead and move on to some maps you can do to practice your editing speed Okay, so this map is perfect for you console players, and it's 0744764192472. Go ahead and put that in. It is made by Raider, the fastest ever editor in Fortnite. As you can see, when you load into the world, it gives you a grappler and rift to make sure you can transport around the world, and it has loads of different, going easier to harder, difficult variants, and you can even have some drop-down variants, so you can even practice editing down and editing up, and it comes in all shapes and sizes, so anyone can actually practice this map. Anyways, let's move on to the next segment of the video, which is aim tips. Alright, so now moving into aiming, and we'll be going over firstly how to actually aim at a long distance range and how to actually abuse your aim assist that far away. So the first tip is, is actually recently some people have discovered that when you actually strafe left to right, your character and your crosshair actually activates the aim assist for some reason and stays on the person's body and it activates your aim assist. If I was just to go ahead and stand still while it does it, it doesn't actually really give me that much aim assist. However, if I move left to right, I don't know if you guys can see it, it actually pulls up to his head a little bit and it's super useful. However, it does not stop there. So the next tip, what I would advise you to do is if you're ever at a long range, I see some people sometimes just spraying their AR like this, and they don't realize that the bloom actually gets worse the longer you spray your gun. So the best way to take advantage of this at a longer range is by actually tap firing the enemy and actually just shooting once every time the bullet comes back down and you see that first shot accuracy. So you shoot it and it comes back to accuracy, shoot it, comes back to accuracy, shoot it, comes back to accuracy. You guys see what I mean? But anyways, let's move on to actually up close and personal. 
Okay, so us controller players have the disadvantage on keyboard and mouse. The keyboard and mouse can edit fast and do all these fancy things to edit through windows and shoot you very fast and reset and whatnot because the scroll wheel reset. So, as a controller player, how you can improve is by taking advantage of what we have, which is aim assist. And how you can do that is by getting in people's faces. So let's say you're ever in a box with someone, rather than doing all these fancy edits going left to right and crossing over, just get straight in their face and run right up to them. I don't know if you can see, as running around though, the aim assist is literally locking onto his head and I can't let go of his head. Whereas if I'm standing far back and doing all these flick shots and all this whack stuff, then actually, let you know, I might miss my shot every now and then. Whereas if I come up close, then I can easily go ahead and shoot him. And it's a win-win. Okay, now this next tip, what it is, is actually a bit different. So a lot of people may remember the old technique of LT spamming on console. Now, this doesn't really work anymore and it's quite ineffective. But, however, I do recommend you still do something of that and I'll explain what it is. Now, basically, you're going to be holding down your trigger and then when the person moves out of the way, you can let go. So every now and then, aim in and then hold it for a while. Rather than doing the spam technique, aim in, hold it, aim in, hold it, aim in, hold it. And then when you let go in that time, you can readjust in case they have moved out of the aim assist because your aim assist is so slow that it won't be able to drag. So just aim in, hold it, aim in, hold it, and you guys get the idea. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to some ma practice maps you can use to practice your aim. Okay, now the last tip of how you can actually practice your aim before we move on to building tips is actually going to be this aim map right here. 70540663 Now what this is, is this a large aim facility and let's load into it. Take a look. Okay, so now inside of this facility, I recommend three of these main game modes. This first one here called Popcorn to train our AR aim, and then the Richie Tombs uh, reaction time to actually practice our reaction time and improve that. And then the last one is Pump to SMG to make sure that we can get our flick shots and also the flying zombies. First, let's take a look at Popcorn. Inside Popcorn, what we can actually see is these ballers flying around us, and now what we can actually do is practice our aim, AR aim in case actually everyone was flying through the sky, for example. We can practice our AR aim, and it is super useful, and you do not get any aim assist on these balls, so then by the time it comes to a real game and you get aim assist you'll feel way stronger and way better let's have a look at some of the others this next one here is the actual flying zombies game mode and this one will actually give you aim assist but it also tests your reaction time for zombies flying outside of these holes either side and it can actually get you to stop tunnel visioning which is a really bad thing when it comes to aiming and let's have a look at the last one now this last one you have to go ahead and shoot the enemy and then you have to switch your smg and shoot these red dots over here as you can see you would obviously be going left to right but unfortunately it's for some reason it has broken on me but the other two are great anyways i have a look and move on to the building tips Okay, so now we're actually going to the building source section and how we can improve this. First, we need to actually go ahead and make sure you have some vital settings on that you may not have on. So these things can be included as such as like auto open doors. You guys ever may run into a door when you edit. Basically what this is going to mean is if you ever try and go for this edit and instead you edit like this, you actually will speed up your beating building process because you'll automatically just walk through it without having to actually click a button. Anyways, next thing that you're going to want to make sure you have turned on is definitely have turbo building turned on. If you don't have this on, then I don't know what you're talking about. Like, you definitely need to have this on. Also, reset building choice. Definitely make sure you have that on. And then obviously confirm it on release. Now, the last tip I actually had for you guys on the settings sort of things before we actually move into the tips is having toggle sprint. Turn that off and have sprint by default on. And now what this is going to mean is then it will free up a button in here that then you can actually use your left stick rather than clicking it down to sprint. You can actually change it to edit. So rather than having to actually hold down your B button to actually edit the wall or hold down circle instead you can click the left stick down and automatically it will edit as soon as possible and it's going to speed your whole building process up so you can go ahead and finish the edit faster so that you can get onto the next build pretty vital which i actually like to call high ground retakes and this is what you guys can actually practice to make sure you can speed up your high ground retaking ability with builds all right, now I don't want to start out too complicated on you, but I think I should throw in some pretty complex ones so then you can actually practice it and give yourself something of a challenge. So the first one is very simple. You're going to start out in the scissor ramp formation just like so, and you can place a floor down and then place a stair above you and it will go above you and up like this. This is where you get into this protective sort of thing. Now, what you're going to want to do from here is you're going to go ahead and actually place two pyramids just like this. And then when you place these two pyramids, you're going to go ahead and place a floor and a stair just like this. And then when you place the floor like this, you're going to go ahead and edit this. And then you can place a wall up like this. And then jump up here, place a floor, and then carry it on with some stairs like that. Very simple, very easy retake. Let's have a look at another one. Okay, so this next one, we're in the scissor round formation once again. And all you're going to want to do is place a pyramid at the end of it. Edit the pyramid just like so. Place two more pyramids coming out. And then you're going to go ahead and wrap a wall around just like this. And by wrapping the wall around, you're going to go ahead and actually support this. And then you're going to go ahead and edit it just like this. And obviously, it doesn't matter if it will break because now you'll be up. And you'll place another stair and pyramid, floor and a pyramid. And then edit these two. 
jump out to the side just like this by placing a floor and a stair, edit this, and then do a couple of 90s to go ahead and get out of it. Boom, you're now done, and if you practice these sort of high ground retakes, or just search up, I have a high ground retake video linked in the description. Go watch that and practice that, and you can actually improve your builds so much. So definitely go watch that and practice some of those, and you'll improve your builds. Anyways, let's have a look at some maps you can practice your builds on. So if you actually come to the back of the creative thing, you'll see this thing called a Seaside Zone Watch. You're going to do is click Enter Matchmaking, and it's going to load you into Zone Watch. You can practice in this to actually make your build so much better, and I'll show you how now. So when you get into the actual box fight in Zone Watch, then all you got to do is actually push as many people as possible, and just improve your build just by versing people. And if you lose, then that's actually a good thing, because then that means you're playing against good enough players that you can improve against. This person here, hopefully I'm about to dumpster on, boom, got him dead. And all you got to do, basically, just go around the lobby. If you're not as good as me, then don't worry. Just go around the lobby anyways, trying your best. And if you die, then it's not honestly a big problem. Because if you're dying, then that means the people are better than you. And if you're playing against people that are better than you, then that means there is room for improvement. So just go ahead and actually play against these players. I'm going to have to see if I can clutch up here for the dub. Oh, this little kid's trying to get away. Little Timmy ain't having it. It's all Timmy ain't having it. I hope you're dead, mate. Sorry. Well, I died. And there we are, though. I practiced my builds, and I got overall better. And you can do that, too. Anyways, guys, I hope you all have enjoyed today's video. If you are still watching, then make sure to subscribe. And also go check out some more of my videos so you can even improve even more. And also go ahead and drop a like. Remember, we are going for 1,000 likes on today's video. So subscribe with notifications so you never miss a new tip video. And other than that, guys, peace out and watch another video. See ya.